What is going on guys and welcome back to another video. If you're like me, by this point your bedroom has turned into both your home office, your meeting space, your recording studio, and really just about anything. And on top of that, you found yourself with more time on your hands than you've ever been used to before, and you're constantly looking for things to do. So my goal of today's video is to help recommend some things to those of you looking to improve yourself for your career in baseball. Let's jump into it. Welcome to Simple Saber Metrics, the brains behind baseball's latest data-driven revolution. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about the practical applications of baseball's latest technologies and training techniques, join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below. While we are all at home re-watching some of our favorite sporting events of all time, just wishing we could all be back at it. It's hard to picture exactly how you can continue to improve yourself in terms of the career goals you may wish to achieve in this game. But I'm here today to tell you that actually, this is one of the best times to help get yourself ahead of everybody else. It's a phenomenal time to learn something new by utilizing the increased free time we've all found ourselves tackling at this point in time. It's the perfect time to reflect and evaluate where you're at and where you'd like to be. How can you become the best version of yourself on the other end of this situation? The three skills that I believe there is no better time to tackle than the present are going to be the focus of today's video. These three things are beginning to learn Spanish, teaching yourself to code, and expanding your network. Let's dive into why I chose these three in particular and check out how I recommend going about learning some of these new skills. So here we all are with more time on our hands than we've ever been used to. Sure, you could tackle an entire Netflix series in a day, but if you fall into that trap in this sport, there are other people out there looking to outwork you. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're one of the ones trying to get ahead. Let's check out our first skill. My first recommendation to anybody and everybody trying to work in professional baseball is to find a way to learn Spanish. Why might you ask? Well, on opening day in 2019, more than a fourth of players on MLB rosters primary language was Spanish. There's a huge population of Latin American players in professional baseball, and although teams provide excellent resources to help teach them English, having an ability to speak their language is an easy way to set yourself apart from other people in the industry. On top of that, as you move into the minor league system, this number continues to grow, and I've seen it firsthand in my time with the Orioles. It's a completely different game if you're going to allow a language barrier to get in your way of helping every player or coach in an organization be as good as they can be. So great, it's an awesome idea to start learning this stuff now, but where should you begin? Well, first off, there are several apps out there that can help get you started. The main goal of a lot of these apps are simply to increase your vocabulary so you become more comfortable speaking as you go. So it's a great place to start up in the beginning with no upfront cost. Here you can dive into apps like Duolingo and Babbel for free with paid versions to enhance your experience. Rosetta Stone is another popular option, but it comes at a price. Whatever route you choose here, stick to it, because repetition is how you're going to start seeing those results in the long run. Another recommendation I have is to hop onto some more specific baseball related vocabulary. You can do this by simply googling terms that you may find helpful and creating some flashcards for yourself, or there's a book that Kyle Bodie of the Reds recently tweeted out recommending a Spanish workbook simply based around baseball vocabulary. I would highly recommend adding some baseball related vocab to whatever your study sessions entail as that is what is going to matter once you get your boots back on the ground. Finally, in doing my research and speaking to people who have gone through this process before, the best way to learn is to immerse yourself. Do whatever you can, as often as you can, to immerse yourself in the language you're trying to learn. Turn your phone to Spanish, find a group of like-minded colleagues and force yourself to eliminate English from the conversations and see how much quicker this stuff all comes to you. You'll never make it unless you fully dive in and own it, so find a way to get yourself into it. My next topic, that I believe is becoming almost as valuable as speaking Spanish at this point in the game, is learning how to code. Just like the ever-rising number of Latino players in professional baseball, the number of R&D or analysts in big league front offices has been growing exponentially over the last few years. The ability to take the massive amounts of data that is spit out from all of our favorite systems like TrackMan, Rapsodo, or Blast into an easier, more readable format is a unique skill that is being rewarded across the entirety of professional baseball right now. And the best way to do this is to learn how to code. And yes, this may be just as time consuming as learning a new language, but I'm going to promise you that it will be time well spent. 
Even if you aren't looking to be an analyst, this skill will allow you to have better, more informed conversations with the people who are doing the work to become analysts. If you want to be in player development, this is a must-have skill that can really help you set yourself apart from the rest. So where should you begin? I recommend, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, as always, the book that taught me most of what I know about coding, Analyzing Baseball Data with R. It's a phenomenal book meant for beginners specifically interested in coding baseball data, so I really highly suggest hopping on this first. If you're looking for something to get started with for free, there are tons of great LinkedIn courses you can find online that will help you with data visualization in general. Also, you can dive in with a free account to DataCamp that also has some more baseball specific modules for you to go through and actually get some practice typing out code while understanding the why behind what you're trying to do as well. And if you enjoy the way that you're learning with DataCamp, it also has a paid version where you can get access to even more great courses. I'd highly recommend looking into any of these three areas if you're even somewhat interested in learning to code. As always, you can find links to everything we talk about today in the description down below. Lastly, and one of my favorite suggestions in these times is to continue to expand your network. Everyone in the world right now is sitting at home missing baseball just as much as me and you. And one of the best ways to learn is to get connected with people you respect. So reach out. Twitter DM, email, whatever you have to do to set up a quick phone call with somebody new. If you're just trying to get your foot in the door in this sport, a tip my mentor in college taught me was to ask three simple questions to people you're meeting for the first time. How did you get to where you are today? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? And do you have any advice for someone looking to be in your shoes in a couple years? Ask this to one person and you will obtain some very valuable information. Ask this to a ton of different people and you may pick up some themes of what makes the people you look up to tick. And on top of that, everyone knows the old saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So find a way to constantly broaden your horizons during this time by expanding your network and getting out of your comfort zone a little bit. So those are my three recommendations for things to do with all of your increased free time. And while I thought of many other things to include in this video, I chose these three in particular for a very important reason. And here's why I believe there's no better time than the present to dive deep on these things. While these are unprecedented and very unfortunate times, you need to think of each moment as an opportunity. What are you doing to better yourself each day? In the beginning, I highly suggest taking some time to step back and reflect. What things worked for me in this last year? What have I done well? Then turn to the future. What can I do to be better and make a plan for how you're going to get there? The whole world may feel like it's on pause right now, but with the technology I know all of you have available, there's no excuse not to use this time to grow. Find ways to add to your toolbox and sharpen your mind, whether that's picking up a new skill or simply reading more books. There's no better time than now to start getting into some new good habits. And finally, find ways to get connected and stay connected with some good people. There are a lot of people doing some cool things in this game right now, and you can always learn something from every conversation you have with people in this industry. Every new person I've spoken to over the past month is thrilled to have a little time to take a step back and talk about baseball. So get out there and get connected. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support, and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.